Hello everyone, welcome back to Calico K. We're in a different place today, this is my temporary workspace until um, the barn is ready. Um, getting a little bit closer now, flooring done and things like that. So um, for the moment we're going to be working here or in my other temporary studio but for today we're, we're, we're at my desk. So um, I'm going to introduce the Easter stitch for you. It is going to be split into four pieces this time so we're going to have, I'm going to introduce you to everything that we're, do, we're, we're doing, um, look at the kind of resources that you might need and then I'm going to split the stitching into three series. So part one there'll be three stitches, part two there'll be three and part three there'll be three. Um, but this is just the intro so this is part A I think. Uh, so I thought rather than doing one big stitch for Easter I would divide it up and I'm basing mine on a 12 and a half inch calico square or possibly fabric square I'm not sure yet but I've decided to divide it up into nine small stitches so this means that you can pick one you can pick a few or you can do all of them and they're all based around things that are to do with Easter so uh, I'm going to look at first of all the the kind of things that you're going to need so I'm basing the uh, the probably the, the the lowest piece of fabric the base fabric I'm going to be doing on a polyester wool mix felt and this gives you a sort of a soft base to start so three and a half inch squares and that means that you can fit nine into that space and um, so I've chosen to do a little series I've actually had a bit of fun and um, mapped out a few ideas whether I slavishly stick to that or not I don't know yet but um, that's the kind of idea so there are nine aspects of Easter for me yours might be completely different the, the beauty of these is that they can be used for all sorts of different things so you can use them as card toppers you could make Easter cards with them you can use them as um, just little simple stitches that are just mindful that you just sit and do when you feel like it they are fairly easy so some of them are really suitable for children to do um, there's a mixture of things that I'm going to be using so I've got some fabrics here some of them are pre-printed some of them I'm going to use as backgrounds so I've got a lovely one here with clouds on it and one of the squares will be to do with the weather because I think that's quite relevant at the moment we've got hail and rain and wind and everything you can think of in the last few days we've had the gorgeous sun so so a little bit of that maybe will feature i've also got this fabric which is um a really nice kind of basic flowers background so that is definitely going to come into play this fabric was quite interesting i've i've actually i've mocked out a few and i've used some of the flowers and some of the colors um, but not in the way that you would normally have used them. I'm really sorry there's traffic going past if you can hear it. This um, this one we've used before. This one's got some quite good leaf shapes on it. So that one's a useful one. And then we've got things like lace, which adds a little bit of texture. And we've got pre-printed fabric. So for example, this one, which is lovely, it's got bunnies all over it. So I'm pretty sure that that'll end up as a background for one of the squares, <laughs> like bunnies. I used to foster bunnies. That's more of that fabric. You can see it a bit more clearly now, but I'm gonna probably use some of these little sections here. And then there's just some plain green that might end up as an under fabric for something. So I'm gonna layer these a little bit more than um, than I have done in the past. This one I really liked because it really did give the idea of grass in the background. So again, that's quite a good base fabric. And then I found this really cute little sparkly fabric with lots of little Easter egg baskets. And um, that one might end up as a, as a base or it might end up as details. 
So that's the sort of thing that we're going to look at. And then it's things like collecting up different ribbons. I like that one, for example. That's a little piece of organza ribbon. That one probably come into play. I'd like to do a square on lambs. And I've got some just some raw wool here, which is really gorgeous to feel. It's very soft and very tactile and lovely for children. So that one's a good one. And then obviously there's also there's pre-printed ribbons. I've got a lovely one here, which is bright, bright pink. And it says Easter egg hunt on it. So by way of a little banner somewhere along the line. And then I've chosen to use three different colours for my squares. So I'm going to alternate them. So I've got a, a really lovely sky blue, a good nice mid green and then a, a kind of very soft pale yellow and they're going to be my three so I'm going to have two of each and that will give me nine. Is that right? Three of each. My maths is never very good. <laughs> three of each. So and I'm going to alternate them so they will randomly appear in the tw in the the nine um, squares that we're going to do so I'm just going to quickly show you how to use a square rule because these if you've never used one are really really easy but they do catch you out on occasions so to cut my squares <clears throat> I've used a um, a small square rule and I want them to be um, three and a half inches so the trick is to find the corner that's got one and one and you place that into your fabric so you push that into the fabric and then you find your three and a half and you slide it back so that that three and a half and that three and a half is on that corner and then you can use a friction pen or you can use Taylor's chalk or uh, or you can pin so I'm just going to pin because on felt I, I generally use a friction pen and friction pen don't, doesn't like um, felt at all so I'm just going to slide a couple of pins in there I know that that's my corner and then using my dressmaker scissors I will just snip into that corner point pop those back and there is a three and a half inch square so it's quite simple to use you just have to remember and this is the biggest key this is why people fall foul this one actually doesn't have a one and a half um, measure at the end some of the bigger ones do but if you just find the, the square that's got one and one, so the very first square, that always goes onto your fabric, slide that onto your fabric, and then you slide it back and you find your measurements. So it's a really easy tool to use and invaluable. I've got them in all different sizes. Um, so there we go. We're going to use um, a, a variety of embroidery um, stitches what I have done is all the tutorials that I do on the hoops so I use a little hoop here and I do all of the stitches on here first so that you get an idea of what to do so I've put those into a video and um, there'll be there'll be different videos with maybe three or four on them and this is a new thing so bear with me but I'm going to do a playlist of just embroidery stitches and so any embroidery stitches that I use that you want to use you can simply go and find them on that on those video sets um, I have done video tutorials on the longer stitches they're they're within it but I did think that you don't want to be trawling through a whole stitch although please go and watch them um, so instead I decided that I'd put them into sets and then you can just go and look and there'll be the, the title. So for these nine stitches, or these nine, yeah, these nine stitches, we're going to be using 
um, cross stitch, we're going to be using running stitch, herringbone stitch, the stitches that we did in the in the spring slow stitch they're going to become incorporated in that so hopefully you've been on there and you've had a look and you've had a go. Um, so lazy daisy, chain, um, what else? Mm, we're going to use a version of chain stitch in this which is different. We're going to do um, sashiko stitching which is a lovely Japanese stitching and it has a really good textural quality to it. And, um, and we're going to do some variation on running stitches, so using weaves and so forth. A um, little bit more couching, French knots, stem stitching, all of those that I, they're all my favourites, I love them, and they're all very useful. So um, I hope that you'll enjoy it, I hope that you'll come and take part, and uh, I look forward to meeting you when we start stitching. Take care, have a lovely time, enjoy the sun if you're out in it. I've been in the garden and it's been brilliant. So um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.